Alternate history can make very good fiction, and creating a world where certain events changed is an interesting story, which is why the genre has had success over the years and continues to do so. One of the most famous alternate history novels is The Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Dick, set in an alternate 1962 where the Axis powers won World War II. Not only have they defeated the Allies, but the countries of Nazi Germany, Italy, and Japan took over the entire world. The story tells the perspective of multiple people living in a defeated United States. But they aren't who we care about. What we care about is the scenario. Dick's perspective on this Axis world is dark and disturbing, and provides a harsh look at how things could have been had America, Britain, and Russia lost the war. In Dick's world, everything would have changed. Literally everything. So in this video, we are going to explore Dick's scenario, and break it down piece by piece to shove into your greedy little mind. The scenario starts off in 1963, when President Roosevelt is assassinated before he ever is able to become a strong president or implement his policies. The following presidents, John Garner and later John Bricker, are very weak and destabilize the United States. Without a central leader in the Depression, the US falls into a hole, while Nazi Germany and Japan grow stronger. The US bows to the whim of the Axis powers, staying isolationist and out of European affairs. Since their economy is weak, the Americans are unable to supply the British and Russians in their war against Germany. Quickly, the Nazis are able to conquer both Britain and the USSR by 1941. The Japanese allied with Germany take this opportunity to attack the US in a larger attack against Pearl Harbor. America's Pacific fleet is wiped out in a single day, and soon Japan invades Hawaii. In the next few years, the two powers invade America from both sides, with Japan conquering the west coast and Germany annexing east of the Mississippi. By 1947, all opponents of the Axis powers, including the US, surrender. In the following decades, the world becomes much different, as the Axis face relatively no major opposition to their plans. Japan expands its borders to Oceania, Australia, mainland China, and all of Southeast Asia. Japan sets up a white puppet government on the west coast, called the Pacific States of America. Japan culturally changes the west coast, making it infused with both American and Eastern cultures. A mass migration of citizens from Japan occurs, changing the demographics of the states. However, even though Japan does control the American west coast, they are relatively light rulers compared to their Nazi counterparts. Surprisingly, even though they're an empire, Japan has liberalized in the 20 years since the war. As in our timeline, how Americans today prize Native American artifacts, so do the Japanese colonists prize pre-war Americana. In Europe, the story is much darker than in our timeline. In Dick's scenario, the Nazis shape the entire continent and landscape in their image, reshaping the world around them with scientific advancements and horrifying policies. Because of 20 years of German engineering, technology has progressed far beyond the 1960s of our timeline. In Dick's scenario, the Germans have already colonized the moon and set up man exploration of Mars. To gain more land, the Germans drain the Mediterranean Sea, turning it into a fertile farmland. However, these scientific and engineering works come at a terrible price. With nobody to question the Nazi policies, a mega-holocaust occurs after Germany conquers Russia, Poland, and Eastern Europe. Hitler's plan of Lebensraum is actually put into effect. The only comparison this can be is the Native Americans and the Europeans. Slavic people in Dick's scenario are murdered into extinction. Millions and millions of people wiped out in a genocide. Russian culture and Eastern Orthodox religion is non-existent. Poland, Russia, and Slavic lands are destroyed and replaced with German colonists. Hitler's Aryan race grows and replaces the ruins of Moscow and Russia. Any few Slavic survivors live in Native American-style reservations out in Siberia. The Mega Holocaust also expands into Africa, where Nazi Germany in 1962 is leading a genocide against Native Africans. Germany as well brings back African slavery in both Europe and the United States. Which, oh boy, leads us to Nazi-occupied America. After the United States fell, it was reduced to east of the Mississippi, where a Nazi puppet government replaced American democracy, implementing Nazi policies in the US. 
From the context, the Holocaust came to the United States, wiping out anyone deemed unworthy by Nazi standards. What used to be the United States is split into three nations. The Japanese-controlled Pacific States, the Nazi-controlled United States, and the Free States of America. Free States is basically a buffer zone between the two superpowers. Americans don't know life before the war, and those that do are either too brainwashed or find it too hard to imagine a world without Axis domination. Young Americans in Dick's novel accept the status quo and grow up not knowing the culture of pre-war America. They think that an ally victory would have led to a communist victory. Oh yeah, and Canada? Canada just remained Canada. They literally didn't change at all. It's just Canada. Really? Mr. Dick? Really? Like us on Facebook, subscribe if you have not done so. This is Cody from the Alternate History Hub.